In 2023, when the AI revolution was just getting started, most people really didn't know what AI was. They maybe heard of Google using machine learning to improve search results or that most of quote unquote AI was really just overblown statistics that made a few things that were basically computer science parlor tricks possible. Obviously the basis of the algorithms that we now use today on incredibly powerful GPUs were largely created in actually the 1960s and 70s. And in 2023, a number of things happened, which meant that we could create things using AI that we once thought to be impossible. And the result of this were large language models that were actually incredibly impressive, much better than any chatbot we'd seen for the last 10 years. We started to see mumblings of Dolly 3 from OpenAI, back when OpenAI actually was open and not closed source. And one of the brightest pillars of light in all of this, giving us hope that maybe the progress and the future of AI would not just be held by big tech, was a fledgling company called Stability AI and their incredible model Stable Diffusion, which was released shortly after Dolly 3. So Stable Diffusion stood for a number of things. Stable Diffusion stood to show that yes, a company that doesn't have millions or billions of dollars can create a model that competes with companies of this size, that you can share models and have the organic results be a greater sum total of knowledge and progress than similar tools created by large closed source organizations like OpenAI. And there was a time in 2023 where the most exciting news in this entire industry was when a new version of Stable Diffusion was released and what GPUs you could run it on. And I know I've made plenty of videos on this channel about both running Stable Diffusion on GPUs and Stable Diffusion itself. And today, the story is a little bit different. And frankly, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. So obviously, over the last six months or so, Stability AI has run into some challenges. They've run into challenges with profitability. They've run into challenges with key members of their org departing, some claiming that Imad Mistak grossly mishandled the financials of the company, was trying to defraud other founders of their shares or the value that they thought they held in the company. And there were even bigger questions, like is Stability AI actually following US copyright law? And the greater questions of how anyone should license a model like this, where of course there's questions of who can use it uh, commercially, of who really owns the images created by this, and the questions of what the bounds of these models should be for those who want to create with them when they're creating things that maybe the mainstream internet doesn't understand or doesn't really agree with. The beauty of Stability AI and Stable Diffusion is that it doesn't tell you what you can't do. It doesn't tell you to prompt something else when you use a word it doesn't like. It doesn't say that you've given it too many prompts. It gives you fine-tuned control that you control and run on your own GPUs. So if you have your own GPU, in theory, you're not paying someone for every image that's coming from it. And Stability AI doesn't just do images anymore. Obviously, they've made incredible progress in research for things like Stable LM. They've created some of the most feature-rich text-to-speech models in recent months, even progressing all the way to text-to-video. And some of the most crazy, impressive workflows with tools like Comfy UI and Automatic 11.11. I think it's also worth mentioning that for a while, Stability AI actually had a surplus of GPUs and funds to fund other projects. And ironically, Stability AI's start came from sort of surplus funding from Midjourney, which was kind of cool. And that said, Stability AI, when they had money, before they had burned through nearly $250 million, which granted goes fast when you're buying lots of GPU time, actually funded a lot of incredible projects that have shown that were both promising at the time and have showed results. For instance, there have been some models in the past week that have showed impressive discoveries using large language models to supercharge um, protein modeling and folding. So it's really cool to see. And of course, Ahmad is very happy to brag about this on his Twitter. So the question is, how did Stability AI go from one of the absolute uh, darlings and juggernauts of the generative AI world in 2023 to now in 2024, nearly a year later, where Ahmad has departed, the major leadership in the company is gone, and the last ditch effort upon the pending release of Stable Diffusion 3 has basically failed. Where today, Reuters broke that Stability AI is discussing a sale amid cash crunch and is actually considering bankruptcy protection because they are quickly running out of money. I'm really excited to get into this topic and there is actually some good news for where we might start to see Stable Diffusion waits. So welcome to AI Flux. 
Let's get into it. So this morning I got on Twitter and I saw that unfortunately Stability AI was in troubled waters. And we've known for basically two weeks that Stability AI has been skipping out on paying their bills to Amazon AWS for their GPUs. It's also sort of a rough time for the British startup scene because obviously the French have been kind of dominating in certain areas with AI and innovation in Europe is increasing, but its velocity and its presence is not as numerous as it is in the US, obviously which I hope will change in the future. And basically, Stability AI is just out of money. They've spent money on research and on training, and they have yet to yield either a business model that makes money or a way to actually license these models that makes money, uh, even when they've basically copied the business model of mid-journey, so having their own means of having people pay to use their image generator service. And in their last kind of bizarre update, they decided to literally copy mid-journey and just port the hosted version of Stable Diffusion to a Discord bot, basically. It's a really interesting kind of slow motion failure of the company. And so there's some questions of like, you know, who's going to buy this? Where will we actually see Stable Diffusion 3? And I'm actually kind of hopeful with the Stable Diffusion 3, because the thing is, is it is running in production in some capacity. And there've been some weird parts partnerships that were released this week, one of which claims to be actually using Stable Diffusion 3 and kind of a partnership with Stability AI. And my thought here is that basically the only remaining value in Stability AI as a company is one Stable Diffusion 3 because there's just a lot of hype around it, people want to see it, and basically the engineering team and the data sets they've managed to co-opt. Uh, obviously, they're way behind the GPU bills and they don't actually own many of the GPUs they actually use. So this partnership is probably among many last-ditch efforts to save Stability AI. So this comes from a company called ArgMax, which basically is a company that has do been doing a lot of tooling and research on on-device inference for large language models and generative AI. They say here that their big announcement is on-device Stable Diffusion 3. So they say, we are thrilled to partner with Stability AI for on-device inference of their latest flagship model, which granted no one has seen. We are building Diffusion Kit, our multi-platform on-device inference framework for diffusion models. Given ArgMax's roots in Apple, our first step was to bring Stable Diffusion 3 to Mac using MLX. We have optimized the memory consumption and latency for both MLX and Core ML. So clearly they're both going for Apple Silicon on MacBook Pros and Apple Silicon on mobile devices like iPhones and Apple Watches. We will open source this project alongside Stability AI's upcoming open weights release. So in theory, with this cache infusion, we might actually see Stable Diffusion 3. Until then, we will share inference performance data in the coming days and work on compressing the models. Don't hesitate to reach out if you want your diffusion models on device and they have this doge holding um, sd3 core ml mlx so what's interesting is this came one day before the public renouncement that stability ai is basically out of money and looking for a buyer probably to be picked up for pennies on the dollar in theory either argmax has a ton of money and they might actually be looking to acquire stability ai because if you're partnering and you know using St stable fusion 3 in this capacity Again, it's kind of where the last bits of value remain in this company. Hopefully this is pretty cool. I mean, we've seen stable diffusion and generative AI on native MLX before, so that's not really a massive improvement, but the idea that they are specializing in generative AI going forward is actually pretty cool. They've been pretty big doing things like having the fastest whisper implementation on iOS for some time as well. And they've also been one of the biggest contributors to a lot of the open source Apple projects on GitHub or offering kind of their own improvements on top. And uh, they've also been like commonly, uh, ArgMax is one of the people in the comments under new models that is you know instantly quantizing or adapting them for MLX. So hopefully we see Stable Diffusion 3 as a result of ArgMax, even if Stability AI goes under, but we're just gonna have to wait and see because if I know anything, um, acquisitions like this are messy and take a lot of time. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of kind of back and forth and debate as to whether or not who gets the most value out of Stable Diffusion 3, especially since the public hasn't seen it yet. Now, obviously we've also made videos in the past about how Imad is now working on a number of crypto projects. And Namad still is on the board of Stability AI. He's no longer the CEO, but in theory, he still has quite a number of votes. And since obviously um, Stability AI doesn't release the terms of their board publicly, 
we can make some assumptions about what is going on, but there are kind of sparse details on what specifically Ahmad is working on. But again, we got more details today and kind of yesterday as to why there's been some kind of overlap and seemingly unconfirmed partnerships between the Render project, which is a basically distributed GPU cloud that uses an Ethereum token for payment that basically at this point just renders Octane for iPad apps. So it, they're really kind of limited in what they're doing right now. And then in theory, yeah, Stability AI is partnering with them to basically use their network of GPUs. Because the irony of Stability AI is they don't really have any GPUs. They always rented them. So if they fail because they ran out of money, it's kind of the best example as to why you should just buy GPUs if you're going to be doing something a lot. And never rent them uh, at scale because you'll just you'll burn through all your money. But uh, there was this early interesting kind of Telegram post from Ahmad that wasn't leaked, but was kind of published here in which it, basically someone is asking, is there anything you can tell us about how far along stability is in integrating with the render network? And he said, it'll be part of a new thing for integration of distributed data for the model there being optimized for everything. So distributed data is easier. For instance, Apple MLX now for Stable Diffusion 3. And there's a question of if ArgMax is also involved here. But uh, what's curious is, you know, obviously Render, I mean, they don't have the money to acquire Stability AI unless Stability is really in dire straits. And it looks here like this is just kind of a new play for Stability to have a cheaper form of compute, not necessarily a partnership of someone who's giving them money or that kind of thing. But we don't really know because the terms of this deal have been really murky and obviously none of it's public. Another thing that we know is that Stable Diffusion 3, even though it's in theory is more efficient, costs a lot for stability to run and they're likely price gouging more so because they need the money than that this is actually their current break even. There's also a chance that like many other AI companies, they were actually running inference on these models at a loss just to try to get more users. Because in theory, if you've never done startups before, um, pumping users reasonably is generally a pretty easy path to getting more investment. They wanna see more users, they wanna see more engagement. And at some point, it sounds stupid, but like there are times where it actually makes a lot of sense to operate at a loss to get more users, to get more investment, to hope that you reach a, a point of profitability in the future. And unfortunately, this gamble didn't exactly pay off for Stability AI. The other really interesting thing is Ahmad has been a big fan of doing personal AMAs every month. And there were some interesting things from his post on May 15th. So the day before we heard that Stability might be up for sale, he answered a number of questions. Now, a lot of them don't really provide much insight into much of anything. For instance, Ahmad flat out said that he doesn't really understand or care what uh, AGI is, which granted, I think is kind of a fair thing to say. One guy asks, do you still have any info about stability? Do you think they'll continue with open source for new models? Which modalities are current? And again, he basically asks like, hey, when you see people trying to pump render using his name, what does he think? So basically asking if that's actually, actually legitimate. Publicly, Ahmad is okay saying that he's no longer involved actively with stability AI anymore. And he pretty much just cites that like, yeah, like they said they would release open models and in theory, Stable Diffusion 3 is a part of that. He you know, pretty much says that he's trying to kind of stay heads down working on his own uh, crypto stuff. And then actually just doesn't give any information about Render and just links to one of these kind of podcasts he went on when he talked about some of his previous crypto stuff before. And for those who think he's just shilling crypto left and right, I would have you look at tweets like this where there are people who are asking all these wild questions about, you know, how do we distribute models and how can we do it more decentralized? And, you know, can we do it with blockchains. And the irony is that Imad is very clear and very willing to say that, no, I don't think we really need much of that. Pretty much him saying here that all these companies pretty much just used a base model and then everything else is pretty much just Laura's on top of that. It's basically arguing that, yeah, the issue of distribution has already been solved with torrents. And I'm not sure why you'd really want too many more layers of complexity baked on top of it. He's still basically saying that everything that stability does will be open source, even though claiming he doesn't have active involvement anymore. I guess this means that pretty convinced that with his remaining voting shares that he can push stability to actually still release everything open source. And I think the most interesting thing here, especially given that SD3 doesn't appear to really have video capabilities that are much better than previous versions of stable video. Someone asks, and it's just a render bot account, but it asks, you know, what do you think is more likely to become established? Video generation models like Sora and Vio or video creation where 3D data is generated by AI. And I will say stability AI has made massive investments and acquisitions in this space and they just haven't quite gotten around to getting their video to be a bit better and Imad's answer is both are interrelated to be honest and allow for decomposition and recomposition so I think that's a pretty cool answer basically saying that like yeah 3d is kind of the key to this 
and that that's where he thinks a lot of the progress with Sora came from. And for now, uh, the two biggest models that he's impressed by are Deep Seek and Quen, which I think is kind of a relatively hot take given what's going on now. So that's what's going on with Stability AI. And other than that, we don't really know a lot yet. I would definitely recommend reading the article from Reuters if you want some more uh, detailed information. To be frank, I read the article and the article is just kind of biz speak for saying that Stability AI is in a really tough spot. I know it might be unreasonable or that it might be, it might seem like something that's a bit ridiculous to think, but I do think we're going to see the open weights for Stable Diffusion 3. It might not be as polished or as powerful as Imad or, or the Stability AI team initially intended, but I do think we'll see it and the question is what will come after that? Will Stability AI remain um, an entity? Will it just be picked up by one of the big tech giants like Google, Microsoft, or Meta? Or is a company like uh, Orgmax going to pick them up and kind of use them as a spinoff as a way to launch um, a new AI product? I'm curious what you guys think in the comments below. I'm curious how you guys have used Stable Diffusion in the past and what you think you'll do going forward if, this, if we lose one of the best sources for open source image generation base models that we've had for basically the last 12, to 14 months. This has been kind of a weird video to make because I've always been a really big fan of Stability AI and they've driven a lot of interest to the space that I think otherwise wouldn't have been here. They've also been one of the most controversial since now artists just seemingly hate all technology because obviously st Stable Diffusion made that uh, a little more difficult for them. So yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share. As always, I hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next one.